Finally, something a little bit more different. So far, we've been looking at standard normal distributions, and now we're just going to look at a normal distribution that hasn't been standardized. So in question 18 here, we've got let x be a normal random variable with mean mu equals 10 and standard deviation sigma equals 0.5. And there's a few questions we have to answer here. I'm going to do a couple of them. I'm going to do A, I'm going to do B, I'm going to do E. Um, so, or D and E actually. So um, yeah, I'll leave D and E for a different video. Here we go. First of all, in terms of notating what uh, that question means, it's X is distributed normally with a mean of 10, a standard deviation of 0.5, and so the variance is 0.5 squared. So remember, it's always written as mu and then sigma squared. You don't have to evaluate um, 0.5 squared. You just leave it as, in fact, it's better if you don't, just leave it as 0.5 squared. So what is the probability that x is less than 11? Straight away to our calculator. We're going to use a normal CDF. So menu, 5, 5. Normal CDF is 2, 2. Leave the lower bound as negative infinity. The upper bound was 11. So type in 11. We change the mean to 10. And we change sigma, the standard deviation, to 0.5. If you're given the variance instead of the standard deviation, just square root that variance first and then put that value in here. Press OK a couple of times and out comes 0 0.977. So I'm writing that down on my screen right now, then I'll flick over 0 0.9 seven seven and look at the answers here and you'll see oh sorry there it is there 0 0.977 and you'll see that the answer here is 0 0.9772 there we go i keep on getting the decimal places wrong and i'm supposed to be drawing this as well and um i'm a bit of a slacker when it comes to drawing but technically you should be drawing before you figure it out so that tells you, gives you an idea about what you're supposed to be doing. So I draw my standard, D, uh, my normal distribution curve in. Down the middle there, bank smack in the middle is 10 here. And then we're looking at X is less than 11. So I'm going to put an 11 here. I can see there's a standard D, because there's a standard deviation of 0.5, I know it's spread out a fair bit. So I'll put it here. And I'll just color code what I'm looking for. I am looking for this, like so. So that's the diagram that represents it. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. And the next one is the probability of x less than 11, given that x is less than 13. This is where diagramming is quite useful. Okay, so what does that kind of mean? So if I draw out my diagram here, like so, then x less than 13 is going to be down here. So there's my variation, which, uh, sorry, my mean, which is 10, and I've got a given from 13. So the only area I'm going to consider is this area here. Okay, that's what I'm going to consider. I'm given that, I'm given that area. The area that I'm looking for is x less than 11. And so x less than 11, if I draw it underneath, oh, I've squished that one, but that's okay, is here. So that's what I'm looking for. Okay. So we can see, well, it should be that this 11 is before the 13. So I'm looking for this area as a proportion of this area. That's basically what I'm doing. Okay, so what am I going to do? I'm going to use my conditional probability formula to get myself started. So the probability of A given B is the probability of A and B. So what does that mean? A and B, if this is like, if this is B here, and this is A here, then A is entirely within this B here, okay? All of this probability is found in here, except for the bit between 11 and 13. Okay, so in other words, the top is simply going to be the probability of X less than 11. 
the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. And the probability of B is X less than 13. And this makes sense. This is the area here. And I'm going to divide it by the area here. And that'll give me my probability. Okay, the rest is just, uh, once you've got that set up, the rest is just calculator work. So here we go. Probability X less than 7 divided by the probability that X is less than 13. Now we can do this bit by bit, or let's do it all in one hit just so that we can say that we've done it. So I'm going to go control divided by to get our fraction up. And on top, I'm going to put the probability of X less than 11. Menu, probability, distributions, normal CDF. Lower bound negative infinity, keep that as it is. Upper bound of 11, mu is equal to 10, and sigma is equal to uh, 0.5, wasn't it? 0.5. Turn. There's the top of it done. And now I need to do the bottom. So again, menu, probability, 5 for distribution, and 2 for normal CDF. From minus infinity to an upper bound, this time of 13, with a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 0.5. Press OK. And there's my bottom of my number now filled in, and I've got... 0.9772499 looks the same as the number above, but it's not quite 38953. Okay, so my final answer is 0 0.9772. Okay, so it looks the same as the answer above, but it's not quite the same. Not quite the same. Okay, we'll go back and have a look at it. And we can see that for this one here, the answer. Oh, I've got it here already, is 0.9772. So it looks the same as that, but it's not quite. It's just that X less than 13 is um, quite a few um, standard deviations away from the norm, right? So it's if each standard deviation is worth a half, then 13 is six deviations away. So you'd expect it to be almost equal to one X less than 13. So it makes sense that these answers are going to be very, very similar. Well, I hope it makes sense to you anyway. Okay, that will do for this video. Next video, we'll have a look at D and E.